Welcome to class 24 of our medium level refrigeration and air conditioning course. On this occasion, we are going to study in detail the table of pressure and temperature of the refrigerant gas hour 449A. If, before continuing, you need to know all the technical characteristics of our 449A gas, a link to a video is appearing on the screen with all the details you should know before doing any work with this refrigerant. Let's start by saying that the refrigerant gas in a refrigeration cycle can absorb heat from the air in a room because it has a very low temperature. In the evaporator, the heat from the air passes to the refrigerant, therefore the air loses temperature, while the heat that was from the air remains in the refrigerant, but there is no increase in its temperature because the refrigerant uses the heat to pass from the liquid phase to the soda. However, there are refrigerants that are made from the mixture of several gases, where there can be a small increase in temperature while its phase change occurs. This phenomenon is called refrigerant creep. On the screen we have the table of pressure and temperature of the refrigerant gas hour 449A. As we can see in the table, we have two pressure columns. One corresponds to vapor or dew pressure and the other to liquid or bubble pressure. This occurs because our 449A has slip. Remember that slip means that the temperature of our 449A changes while it is evaporating and this aspect must be taken into account when recharging with our 449A. To take this slippage into account, we are going to carry out the following analysis. Thus, for example, for an evaporator temperature of 5 degrees, about 41 degrees Fahrenheit, according to the table, there are two pressure values. Liquid or bubble pressure equal to 105.84 psi, and vapor or dew pressure of 89.8 psi. At this moment the question arises, which pressure to select to work? The answer will depend on which part of the evaporator you want to achieve the selected temperature, that is, 5 degrees or 41 degrees Fahrenheit. As Thus, for example, if you want to achieve 5 degrees at the inlet of the evaporator, then it means that at the moment the first bubble of vapor appears while the refrigerant is in the liquid phase, its respective bubble pressure must be present, then you would work with a low pressure in the evaporator of 105.84 psi. 105.84 psi evaporator. Since our 449A has slip, then even though it is 5 degrees at the inlet, this value begins to increase. Therefore, before leaving the evaporator, when there is simultaneously liquid and vapor, the temperature will not be 5 degrees, but will be higher. As the pressure in the table is given in absolute values, therefore you must subtract from these values the atmospheric pressure of your location. 14.7 psi can be taken as general atmospheric pressure. Thus, 14.7 psi must be subtracted from 105.84 psi to obtain a gauge pressure value of 91.14 psi and E. Now let's consider the next possibility. If we want the 5 degrees to occur not at the inlet of the evaporator, but rather at the outlet, that is, when there is pure refrigerant in the form of vapor, then we must work with vapor pressure or dew, in this case with a value of 89.8 psi. As the pressure in the table is given in absolute values, therefore you must subtract the atmospheric pressure of your location from these values. 14.7 psi can be taken as general atmospheric pressure. Thus, 14.7 psi must be subtracted from 89.8 psi to obtain a gauge pressure value of 74.38 psi g. So again, another question may arise, what pressure value is most recommended to work with? Well, in reality, it is more common to work with the dew pressure, that is, to reach the temperature only up to the outlet of the evaporator. 
However, at this point it is important to note that as the bubble pressure is equal to 105.84 psi and the vapor or dew pressure is 89.8 psi. So, in case of working with an intermediate pressure, within these two values, we would be very close to reaching 5 degrees. Not at the entrance, nor at the exit of the evaporator, but approximately in the middle or middle of the evaporator. For example, by taking the average between these values, you have an absolute pressure value of 97.46 psi. By subtracting the atmospheric pressure, you have an average working pressure of approximately a value of 82.76 psi g. Although it is not exact, we can say that with an evaporator pressure of 82.76 psi g, we would be very close to reaching the temperature of 5 degrees in the middle of the evaporator. On the screen we have other pressure values that are usually used with R4490A. Since R4498 is used as a replacement for R404A, in medium temperature applications we are going to focus on these pressure values. As it, thus, for example, to achieve a temperature at the inlet of the evaporator of 0 degrees C, an absolute pressure of 90.55 psi must be at low. E. On the other hand, if you require these same 0 degrees at the evaporator outlet, then you must work with an absolute low pressure of 75.41 psi. Remember these table values. Subtracting your local air pressure you can use 14.7 psi for a quick calculation. Thus, for example, to achieve a temperature at the inlet of the evaporator of minus 5 degrees Celsius, an absolute pressure of 76.88 psi must be lowered. On the other hand, if you require the same minus 5 degrees at the evaporator outlet, then you must work with an absolute low pressure of 63.35 psi. Remember these table values. Subtracting your local air pressure you can use 14.7 psi for a quick calculation. Thus, for example, to achieve a temperature at the inlet of the evaporator of minus 10 degrees Celsius, an absolute pressure of 65 psi must be lowered. On the other hand, if it requires the same minus 10 degrees at the evaporator outlet, then it must work with an absolute low pressure of 52.92 psi. Remember these table values. Subtracting your local air pressure you can use 14.7 psi for a quick calculation.